A common frustration all welders have is being able to predict, prevent and control distortion. Distortion occurs due to the uneven expansion and contraction of metal when it is heated during welding. There are many different factors that affect distortion. Comprehending and balancing these is crucial to ensuring the final product is correct on the first go. Let's take a look at a few different fabrications that have been distorted due to incorrect distortion control techniques. Distortion control is best learned through practice and experience. This video is developed to help you understand the fundamentals of why distortion happens, so you can apply these techniques on the job. Even experienced welders struggle to control distortion and have to straighten their work from time to time. So if you're starting out, remember, it takes time, patience and practice to get it right. To be able to control distortion, you need to understand why it occurs. The fundamentals are best explained with a plain metal bar and seeing what happens when we expose it to different heating conditions. When a bar is heated with no restraint, it is able to expand in all directions. When it cools, it will return to its original dimensions because there's no restraint during heating. But if we were to place the bar in the jaws of a vise, the vise will act as restraint on the ends of the bar during expansion, preventing it growing in length. When the metal cools and begins to shrink, the bar will contract in all directions. This means we ultimately end up with a thicker, shorter bar. This bar example is relevant in any circumstance when we apply heat to metal. Whether it's a bar, plate or pipe, if we don't allow for expansion and contraction of the material, we will end up with distortion. With welding, we have more than one piece of metal we have to consider. Typically, there are three elements to consider. Two pieces of metal that are being joined together and the weld metal itself. Distortion forces will affect all three of these elements. As weld metal volume increases, the amount of force or load increases and so does the amount of distortion. More weld, more distortion. Examples of the different types of distortion include Longitudinal distortion Longitudinal shrinkage happens along the length of the weld. On cooling, the weld and the surrounding area contracts and shortens the workpiece and weld as a result. This type of distortion is often seen on pipe welds, where it creates a wetting band effect creating a reduction in the diameter of the pipe at the welded joint. Transverse distortion This distortion occurs when the metal contracts across the joint after welding and pulls the edges of the joint together. It is particularly obvious when there is a root gap between the plate or pipe. Angular distortion is where the angles between the welded parts are altered by contraction from the cooling weld. The contraction is greater where there is a larger weld, as a large weld has more volume. Look what happens when we weld two plates together. When thinking about the weld bead, keep the metal bar in the vise in mind as it behaves very similarly to the weld. At and ahead of the arc, the heated weld metal is causing an uneven expansion and contraction of the material. Surrounding the molten weld metal, the plates are also being heated by the arc with a sharp drop in temperature as the weld solidifies. Behind the arc, the weld metal cools rapidly, causing continual contraction behind the weld pool. This whole area is called the heat affected zone. Larger welding beads increase expansion and contraction forces. The contraction forces following the arc become stronger. It's important to note that as the heated weld bead is cooling and contracting, the heat from the bead is transferring to the plates on either side, increasing their temperature and causing them to expand. If this weld is performed without some control, the two plates will distort. No consideration was given to distortion, so flexi appears to ruin all your hard work. Like this example, uncontrolled heat distorts the weldment. Rule number one, reduce weld metal volume, reduce distortion. Weld metal volume is both the size of the weld and the length. Depending on the type of joint and material to be welded, prepared edges will angle between 30 and 45 degrees. Excessive angle on the weld preparation can result in additional weld metal volume and induce more contraction, leading to more distortion. Out of these two examples of single V-butt joints, the example on the left has the ideal bevel angle of 30 degrees for low carbon steel. The use of either multi-pass welding and stringer beads affects the amount of distortion. The theory is one large weld bead will distort less than multiple runs, as multiple runs has a cumulative contraction. That is, each extra run shrinks a bit more. The offset to this is each run after the first stress relieves the previous run. Higher travel speed on the first pass provides less distortion as there is less heat and a smaller volume of weld metal. 
butt welds often have to be done in multiple passes. The root run lower amps to get control and the following runs can be turned up to allow higher deposition rates. Here we see Flexi getting to work on a continuous fillet weld. The expansion from heat causes the metal to distort. How we can reduce this distortion? Longer welds have greater weld volume. Greater weld volume increases distortion. If the design allows it, the use of stitch or intermittent welds versus continuous welds will reduce the total weld metal volume and therefore amount of distortion. In some circumstances, we can use a series of short welds called stitch welds spaced evenly along the weld joint instead of running a continuous bead. This technique is called intermittent welding, which sacrifices some overall strength but provides a reduction in distortion. Intermittent welds should be used over continuous welds but only whenever additional strength isn't required and corrosion is not an issue. Backstep welding is another technique to minimize distortion. If we were to run a continuous weld to join two plates, the expansion would slowly push the plates further and further apart as it is heated. But if we weld a series of shorter welds instead, working from right to left in the opposite direction to the direction of our weld, the plates will not be affected as much by the compound heating as it moves along the plate. With every new bead, the effect of shrinkage forces is reduced as the plates become more rigid. Let's look at this example of backstepping. By working from left to right and moving forward, we are able to create a sound weld with minimal distortion. Here is an example of backstep welding. Moving left to right, it is welded back towards the previous weld. Rule number two, use distortion to your advantage. If we know how much shrinkage distortion will create, we can take advantage of this. By presetting our material, we see Flexi getting to work and pushing the vertical metal straight as shrinkage occurs. As the weld cools, it contracts and pulls the vertical plate into alignment. As we can see here, the right-hand weld was not preset prior to the weld and created a joint which is not square due to distortion, or the vertical plate is not 90 degrees to the horizontal plate. By predicting the shrinkage force, the left side example was preset before the weld and resulted in a square weldment. When understanding distortion and the effect it can have on the job, we can apply tension or pre-camber the material to compensate. We have tensioned the welded joint using clamps, fixing them in the opposing direction of the weld. Once the weld is completed, if we release the clamps, the shrinkage forces will pull the plate back into shape as it cools. Rule number three, correct sequence and fixtures. An example of correct welding sequence is to balance the welding on the neutral axis of the joint. By placing one weld bead on each side of the joint before capping in a similar sequence, we ensure the heating and cooling is balanced as opposed to the single-sided example from rule one where all of the welding was placed on one side of the joint. This sequence of welding uses less weld metal and counterbalances the contraction forces. By doing this, we are making distortion work for us rather than fighting against us. Intermittent welding as discussed in Rule 1 can also be used on jobs like on this T-fillet weld. By alternating the weld from one side to the other, we are creating opposing forces that will both counteract each other. By welding about the neutral axis, these forces effect will be minimized and will therefore keep the job relatively straight by ensuring distortion is kept at a minimum. Moving along the weld joint from one on the right-hand side to two on the left until all six marked welds are complete. The result is a straighter weldment with minimal distortion. When creating a complex structure, similarly to a crane boom or a truss, we need to use the correct welding sequence to stagger our welds to minimize distortion in the final product. These triangular supports are an example of how to correctly sequence a more complex job. Working our way up the truss welding opposing corners as we go, one side and then the other, making sure that each force we create is counteracted by the next force. By planning out the welds and staggering them in this manner, we can control the amount of distortion. There are many other methods to minimize or counteract distortion. One is peening the weld bead. Peening the weld stretches it to reverse the effect of the contraction on cooling. It also relieves residual stress and thus reducing distortion. Fixtures or other restraints can also be used to prevent distortion. In this example, you can see that the restraints are putting downward force on the metal, preventing it from moving at all. When we release the clamps, you can see that there is virtually no distortion. However, any time that a physical restraint is used, it puts additional stress on the material you're welding. 
By preventing the metal from being able to naturally expand and contract, you are increasing the stress in the weldment. Restraining the metal in this way can cause other issues, such as movement during galvanizing or potentially even cracks along the weld or heat affected zone. For this reason, restraints should only be used in certain applications and with certain materials. Strongbacks are common in industry to assist holding the material in place during welding. Strongbacks provide restraint against the contracting weld. Every new bead created makes the weld more rigid and less prone to distortion, which means strategic and careful application is required, layering one side and then the other resulting in a sound, undistorted weldment. We have now learnt three rules. Reduce weld metal volume. Reduce distortion. By reducing weld metal volume, you are reducing distortion. Use distortion to your advantage. By pre-setting, using restraints or welding around the neutral axis of the metalment, you can use distortion and make it work for you. Correct sequence and fixtures. By using methods like multi-pass balanced welding, staggering and intermittent welding, you reduce distortion. Using these three rules will help you reduce and control distortion while welding, reducing rework.